In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make Christmas matching pet and owner accessories. How cute. I'll show you how to make your own headband bandana matching your dogs. And mine has a little stretch in it because I love mine like that. As well as a dog bow tie, a scrunchie because who can't use an extra one, and a face mask because seriously, we go nowhere today without our face masks. So like I always say, download that pattern and let's start making downloaded the patterns I want to quickly show you how you tape them together so for the accessories for the owner it's page one two three and four and I didn't even bother taping down page three you don't have to because there's nothing connecting here but what you're going to do is you're going to just line them up don't cut the paper at all if you didn't cut off your white margins and just line up the dot the best you can and then you're going to cut along the black solid line and then for the pattern for the dog accessories it's one two three four five six and you don't even have to tape on four here because there really is no connecting there okay so now using your paper scissors not your fabric shears you're going to cut out all the patterns along the black solid line so i'm going to start making all of the owner accessories first let's start with the owner bandana headband so I'm using this really nice plaid here. And what I'm gonna do is fold it right sides together. And I'm gonna place the pattern number one and number two with the fold line on the fold line of the fabric. You could pin it down, use pattern weights, whatever it is that you prefer, and then you'll cut out. your pattern pieces are cut out what you're going to do is iron a double hem on the top and bottom edge here about a quarter of an inch each are ironed in place you're gonna sew uh, the edges here the shorter edges which I've already started right here on the band and you're just gonna fold them in to the wrong side and fold about a quarter of an inch and press and then you're gonna fold this entire band right sides together and pin it So now the next step is to go over to the sewing machine and do some straight stitch sewing. And this is very simple. So here's what I'm gonna do. At the sewing machine with about a quarter of an inch, I am gonna sew a straight line down here and I will actually backstitch on the ends. And then I'm going to sew down this hem as well as this hem. Step is to turn this casing right side out so what I'm going to do is attach a safety pin to one end and the larger the safety pin the better and I'm just going to feed it through until I get it to the other end and I turn the casing right side out right side out then you're going to take your piece of elastic and this measures about five and a half inches across and this elastic is one inch wide you can't even use an elastic that's not as wide that's up to you and I am going to actually use a smaller uh, safety pin and I'm going to attach it to one end I'll feed it in first well, you know what? This fabric's a little thicker, so I won't. I'll just attach it to the edge here. Make sure the edge of your casing is turned in. And then I'm going to attach the safety pin here and feed it through the same way until it comes out the other end. Now that it's out on this end, what you're going to do is leave this end attached with the safety pin because you need that there. You don't want it to slip out. And then I'm going to leave this right here. And I'm going to take the one end here that is unfinished or the raw edge 
fabric and I'm going to scrunch it up and I'm literally just going to stick it inside of here. And then the next thing we're going to do is bring it right over to the sewing machine once I stick that in there and I'm going to sew right across here. So that is why we turned in this edge here so it's nice and clean. So I'm going to pull it out, scrunch it up. My fabric's a little bit thick, but we'll get there. And just like that, you have the owner's headband bandana. Okay, next we're going to make the owner face mask. So you're going to cut this out the exact same way we cut out the fabric for the headband. rectangle of fabric to create the mask but since this fabric as I mentioned earlier is a bit thick what I did because I actually want to wear my mask is I created one with a half uh, red interior so it's a bit thinner and I can wear so the next thing to do is to iron down a hem of about a quarter of an inch on both the top and the bottom here And now the next step is to fold it in half, leaving about an inch up on top there free. So make sure your hems are folded in place. And if you need, you can give it another press just to keep it still or in place. And then you will fold about a quarter of an inch up on top to create a hem there. Iron that down. And then we're gonna roll it again, so it's a double hem. But as you're rolling it again, you're gonna catch this top fabric here. So it kind of catches it in there and it is a casing, so it's open there. And that I'm leaving open because I'm gonna slide in a wire. I love my masks with the wire in there so that it um, just kind of fits better and you make it fit better. Creating the top, I'm gonna slip in a wire tie right inside there and I'm gonna hold it still right towards the center. I know it's in there and I'm gonna sew it in place in a moment. And then I cut two pieces of this really thick string at about 18 inches long, and I folded them in half and slipped on a pony bead. I really like this style. It, it's just so comfortable and doesn't pull on my ear more than the elastic. And then with this in place, with uh, the wire tie in there, I'm gonna create my pleats. You can create as many as you want. Um, I believe for this one, I just may create two or three. Actually, I'll start from here. This red fabric is a bit slinky and I'm hoping it behaves. I'm gonna just use a clip to hold it in place. You can always also use a uh, pin. Now I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and sew a straight stitch down and I'm actually going to back up and cover it again because uh, as I do that I'm going to slip in on each end the rope. So I want to make sure it's really caught in there. And the mask is now complete with the top that bends and really fits your face better. If you want, you can give it one final press just to give it a nice clean finish. And on the ends here, what I do is I tie a knot uh, so that the bead, of course, won't slip off. And now we are gonna move on to the scrunchie. I have gone ahead and cut out the fabric for the scrunchie and remember just like the other ones 
you uh, cut it on the fold here. So you get your nice long piece there. So what you're gonna do on one end is you're going to fold it over, actually with the wrong over on the wrong side, and you're going to press a hem down, about a quarter of an inch. Once you have that in place, what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it in half lengthwise, right sides together. So I'm gonna use my clips because I just find it so much easier with certain projects like this one. And once you actually clip it all together, what you're gonna do is go over to the sewing machine and with about a quarter of an inch away from the edge or your seam allowance, you're gonna sew all the way down this end, leaving the ends open. Make sure you backstitch on your ends. And now, as you've guessed, just like we turned around the casing for the headband, we're gonna do the same exact thing here with a safety pin. The larger or longer the safety pin, the better. And now that your elastic has come out this end, you're going to bring it and carefully not let it go because we don't want to get aggravated here. We're having fun <laughs> and, and we're enjoying making. And I'm going to hold it to the best of my ability and I'm going to join them together, meaning bring them together and tie a knot. Okay, I gotta redo that, of course, because I'm using wider elastic. You can even sew it on the sewing machine, but I just like to make a knot. All right, there we go. So now what you're gonna do is you're going to feed the raw edge into the nice cleaner edge this way. So the cleaner edge is the one that we turned the ends in. And now you can actually hand stitch this to keep it really nice and neat and um, keep its 3D effect, but I'm just gonna feed it right through the machine. You could do it either way. I'm just gonna give it a straight stitch and come right back up. Like that, you have the scrunchy ready to go so what we're going to do next is we're going to work on the adorable bow tie for the dog and before we do that i just wanted to mention less than 10 percent of the people that watch my tutorials and especially download my free printable patterns actually subscribe to my channel so would you mind helping me build my channel so i can keep creating because this does take time and money and please subscribe to my channel and i added the link right there to help you out make it quicker i would really appreciate that okay on to the bow tie Start with the bow tie and what you're going to do is you're going to find the center of your fabric so I'm just going to fold it over and give it a press just to create a crease so I know where my center is and it's right there so I'm going to bring over the top and press and then I'll bring the bottom in and press as well. Now I want to know where my center is. So again, I will fold this in half, keeping these sides together. Now my fabric is, like I said, probably three times already a bit thick. So um, this is gonna be a nice firm bow tie, but just by folding it, doesn't really matter which fabric you use, it will work. You can also uh, consider using a fusible, um, either fleece or interfacing before doing this, if your fabric is super thin. And then I'm going to fold this one here doesn't matter if it's a little uneven in the center because that's all hidden once you add the band. And I'm gonna put aside the bow just for a second. 
and you're gonna take the band and now we're gonna do the same thing. We are going to just fold in. We actually don't have to find the center of this one. We're just gonna fold it in because this one isn't as exact. And then I'm gonna fold the top down. I went over my overlapping fabric. Just leave it there for a second. And then I will actually leave it as is. So now what I'm gonna do here, this is ready to go. And what I'm gonna do it here is I'm going to flip it over to the front and I'm gonna have my double threaded needle ready because we're gonna do some hand sewing. And what I'm gonna do is kind of just create two pleats, right? Just like this, I'm bringing it together. There's no wrong or right way of doing this. So just take your time with it and work with it however you want your bow to look. It'll take a little practice, but practice, as you know, makes perfect. See how cute that is? How adorable, I can't take it. Okay, so uh, I held it with the wrong hand here, so let me just bring this around, my double threaded needle, and I'm just going to hold it still, meaning I'm gonna put a few stitches in there so that it keeps it nice and still for a few moments. I'm just tacking the back on wherever I have my uh, pleat starting here. Again, the whole purpose is to hold it still. I'm not attaching the entire thing right now. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And with that in place, I am going to take this, I'm gonna call it a band for the bow, and this is the open end. So the open end is gonna start on the back here. We're gonna have the open end down, and we are going to attach it in place. We're gonna sew it in place, is what I really meant to say. So I'm gonna start on one end. Just enough, it doesn't have to be the entire thing. Okay. just enough so that it doesn't slip off. We're gonna do much better and secure sewing in a second. So what you're gonna do, what I'm gonna do now actually, is I'm gonna flip it around, see how my bow still held its shape, and I'm going to wrap it. Now as I'm wrapping it, I can make some adjustments if I want. I'm gonna wrap it. You could wrap it once, you could wrap it twice. I'm gonna give it a good twice wrapping because you don't know what the dog might be up to while they're wearing it and I don't want any issues. So I'm just gonna wrap it twice. Okay, right there. I'm gonna just tuck in the edges. With this thick fabric, I should have probably wrapped it once. But twice is totally fine. And I'm going to see exactly where it is that it reaches the center there. So I'm going to trim it and I'll show you what I mean by that. My center's right there, so I'm going to trim. And then I'm going to do some great stitching to hold this thing in place. And here we go. I'm going to grab a little of the band and then come up to the edge. And I'm gonna continue this stitching all the way from one end to the other. is bow so the last thing that we want to do to finish off the bow is to take a piece of elastic and what I did is I ran it through uh, my sewing machine with a quick running stitch so I created a loop there you can even do that by hand I'm gonna trim a lot of that off and what you're gonna do is you're gonna open this up this short end and you're gonna lay it onto the back of the bow where your stitching is and you're gonna sew it on so I'm not even bothering to change my thread to white. I'm just going to do the same stitch here with my navy blue thread and I'm going to attach it. I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side.
The bow tie is done and ready to be attached to the dog collar. How cute is it? All right, the next thing and the last thing we're gonna do is the bandana. I'm gonna make the small dog bandana, but no matter what size you choose, the steps are exactly the same. My two fabric pieces cut out for the bandana. What I'm gonna do is place them right sides together. So right side, right side are touching and I'm going to clip them together. Of course, you can also use your straight pins. Once they're clipped together, I'm gonna to bring it over to the sewing machine and using about a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm gonna sew all the way around, leaving an opening about three to four inches here. It doesn't matter where you leave your opening. If you want, you can use a pencil to mark your opening so that you do not forget. And I will backstitch on the opening ends. together I'm just gonna clip the corners close to the actual uh, sewing line but I won't cut it being careful all three corners and now I'm ready to turn it right side out my favorite tool if you've seen any of my other videos is a chopstick to help me uh, turn and get the corners out so we'll do that and then after this is all turned out <clears throat> right sides out I'm going to give it a nice press and now I'll give it a good press with a nice shot of steam to hold it down And now we're gonna give it a top stitch. So this is where the opening is. I don't even need to use a pin because it stays well. I'm gonna go back to my machine and just give it a nice top stitch. If uh, you have a fabric that's not as busy, you may wanna decide to use one of your decorative stitches on your sewing machine, but that's totally up to you. I'm just gonna use a plain straight stitch. dog bandana that you just tie right there simple and easy and how easy was that pet and owner coordinated accessories so if you really love making things for the holidays just like I do why don't you check out this video right here on making my cute Christmas elf slippers and you can download the free printable pattern from sizes extra small to extra large or if you are looking to decorate your tree and make some more ornaments right here to the right, you can also find with no pattern how to make these beautiful Christmas ornaments. And that's all just some quick hand sewing. Anyway, thank you for being here and I can't wait to see you in the next video.